Hello everybody, we are going to be continuing with the challenge of natural hazards and we're going to go straight into the distribution of earthquakes and volcanoes worldwide. Which basically means where do earthquakes occur in the world and where do we find volcanoes? We're going to focus on looking at maps and describing those maps today. First off, the first thing we need to know, the Earth's crust is split into plates. So these are about 100 kilometres thick and it's a bit like if you crack a boiled eggshell. You can see that there are cracks and they all join together. We also need to know that these are constantly moving. Um, they're moving extremely slowly and we'll go into more detail about the Earth's crust in the next video. So let's uh, start fresh with a fresh world map. Uh, now just to point out, the map isn't to scale and it's hand drawn, so it's not particularly accurate. There may also be a few countries missing here and there, so don't worry, we just need an overview of the key tectonic plates. If you do a Google search yourself, you should be able to find a completed map to print or to save. I probably wouldn't recommend drawing out the Earth unless you really want to, or perhaps you might need to learn your continents or your countries. I'm going to draw on how the Earth's crust is split into plates, and this will be shown in a blue pen, like this one. So the Pacific plate is the biggest plate in the world and around the edge of this is called the Ring of Fire and we'll look at this later on. There are a few smaller plates too and you'll see me add these on. So the blue line demonstrates where the plates are meeting and we call these plate margins or plate boundaries. So you might hear either term. The tectonic plates are moving in different directions and this is normally shown on a map using arrows. The plates are moving extremely slowly, so just a few centimetres a year, which is about the same speed as your fingernail might grow. But although it sounds very slow, it does add up. For example, India has moved 2,000 kilometres north in the last 70 million years. I'm going to draw these arrows on in a turquoise pen so you can see how the plates are moving around the earth. All of the tectonic plates are moving in different directions. Some plates are moving together, for example the South American plate and the Nazca plate. Some plates are moving apart, you can see the African plate and the South American plate moving apart. And some are sliding past each other or sliding in the same direction as each other, such as the North American plate and the Pacific plate. Now we're going to look at where earthquakes are commonly found on Earth. So while I'm drawing these onto the map, um, can you spot any patterns? You might be able to pick out some common themes and link these to the plate margins. All of these red dots are showing where earthquakes commonly occur. Now that we've had a look at where earthquakes commonly occur on the Earth's map, we are going to go through an exam question which asks you to look at the map and to describe it. So the question is, describe the distribution of earthquakes in figure one, which is a three mark question. You may be tempted to get started writing straight away, but there are a few steps you need to practice first. Once you get into an exam, this will take you a few seconds to do, but you do need to practice this first for it to become second nature to you. Firstly, we need to bug the question. So the B means box the command word, and in this case we want to box the word describe. Make sure you know what the describe command word means. The U means underline the most important information you will need in order to answer the question successfully. So in this question, you must only talk about the distribution, earthquakes, and you need to make sure you're only using figure one. This is particularly important because in an exam, the map may have other information on it, which could confuse you, and there will be other figures to use as well. So you need to make sure you're using the correct one. Finally, it's three marks, so you should spend about three minutes on this question. And the G just means to go back and read the question over again. So you just need to make sure that every time you see an exam question, you bug the question. Right, to describe maps and graphs, I recommend using the T technique. 
and this helps you to hit those marks and break down the map or the graph that you have been given as a figure. So in order to do this, first is the T, which is trend, describing the general pattern. Example, give named examples to support your trend. This could be countries, continents or data. And finally, anomalies. Can you spot anything that does not fit the pattern? Something that stands out or that looks weird. There won't always be an anomaly, but check just in case. And the most important thing to remember is it is a describe question, so you must not explain. If you've written the word because in your answer, you're going wrong. So we need to avoid saying why earthquakes are located there. Even if everything you write is correct, you won't be answering the question and therefore you're not going to get the marks. They just want you to describe what you can see in this question. We're going to write an answer to this question together. Let's start with the trend. Pause the video and see if you can find any general patterns in the red dots. What can you see that they have in common? So you may have spotted that the majority are located along the plate margins and are grouped together in narrow belts or lines. In addition, they often occur on the coastlines of countries and more rarely in the centre of the country. Earthquakes are commonly found on plate margins, they occur in narrow belts and often occur on the coast of a country. Next up, we need examples, evidence to prove we haven't just made this all up. So let's add in some named places. For example, earthquakes occur on the boundary of the Pacific Plate and the Eurasian Plate. Earthquakes are found on the west coast of the United States where these plates meet. We also find them on the west coast of South America and on the southern areas of, of Europe. Remember, all place names need a capital letter. That includes oceans and also plate names. It's really easy to forget capital letters, so just go back and correct these if you've forgotten them. And finally, our anomaly. So you can probably see on the map that there are a few red dots that look a little out of place and alone. So let's pick these out. One exception to the pattern is an earthquake occurring in the center of the Pacific Ocean in Hawaii. This is not on a plate boundary and therefore is an anomaly. Now for this question, we don't need to explain why Hawaii experiences earthquakes and volcanoes as it's not on a plate boundary, but it is still interesting to know what's causing this. So earthquakes and volcanoes can form in things called hotspots, where the crust is particularly thin and magma can break through to the surface. And this is how the Hawaiian islands in the Pacific Ocean were formed. Also, some earthquakes don't occur on plate margins because they are caused by human activity, such as underground mining or oil extraction. That's all for earthquakes for now, and next up we are going to be looking at the volcanic distribution. So I'm going to draw these on as little triangles, and just as you did with earthquakes, while I'm drawing these on, can you spot any patterns, examples and anomalies? And now it's your turn to answer a question on your own. Remember, you need to bug the question first and then use the T structure, trend, example, anomaly. Remember capital letters for all named places, avoid explaining and use compass directions to be a little bit more specific. You may want to Google um, a map showing the distribution of volcanoes online. I will add a link to the description box. And that's all for this clip. There's been loads of information, lots of information about exam technique. So well done for working your way through it.